Admittedly, there are some questionable band names out there. Nickelback, Limp Bizkit, Katagoogoo, but the Beatles? The legendary Fab Four who shook up the music world in the 1960s like no other group. If you're curious about how the Beatles got their famous name, keep watching. In this video, I'll be explaining how the famous English rock band, the Beatles got their eccentric band name. But before we go on, can you hit the like and subscribe button? Thank you. Band names on paper might seem like the difference maker between a good group and a great one, when in reality they mean next to nothing in the grand scheme of things. The only important aspect at the end of the day is whether you've got the tunes to walk the walk, and as we all know, the Beatles had that in abundance. Even with the wittiest band name in the world, it becomes meaningless without the songs to back it up. Yes, that's right. The Beatles are proof that a band name is irrelevant once you hear a note of a song. Their name, albeit a corny pun, didn't prevent them from creating history time and time again. At the beginning of careers, band names are treated with the same importance as songwriting, but not in every case, and it should come as little surprise that the Beatles were inebriated when they landed on their final choice. It takes many artists many pseudonyms before landing on the perfect encapsulation of their image. The story behind the name of the Beatles is no different. Many questions involving the band's fascinating story are undisputed, but many are still debated and are a bit foggy even to this day. One of these is, how did the Beatles get their name? Well, while there are lots of bands who are straightforward about the origins of their names, the Beatles was not one of them. Even though the Beatles was a legendary group and their name is known all around the world, even to this day, not many people have any idea why they're called the Beatles. Do many people ask what the Beatles are? Why Beatles? Uh, Beatles. How did the name arrive? So I'll tell you, it came in a vision. A man appeared in a flaming pie and said unto them, From this day on you are Beatles with an A. Thank you, Mr. Man, they said, thanking him. At least that was John Lennon's silly reply to the oft-asked question, as it appeared in Bill Harry's paper Mersey Beat from July of 1961. But the whole story of the Beatles' name began in 1957, when young Mr. Lennon assembled his skiffle group, first calling it the Black Jacks, and then the Quarry Men. The group went through several name changes, surviving monikers like Johnny and the Moondogs, the Bee Towels, the Silver Beatles, the Silver Beat, and the Silver Beatles, before eventually settling on the Beatles. First name the Quarry Men. In March 1957, after acquiring a guitar, John formed a skiffle group with Peter Shotton, and for a week they called themselves the Blackjacks. The name was quickly changed to the Quarry Men after their Quarry Bank school, partly tongue-in-cheek and partly to give the group credibility, according to Lennon author Ray Coleman. Their school song Quarry Men Strong Before Our Birth was rather prophetic. Group members would come and go, but the Quarry Men tag lasted well into 1959, even after the skiffle craze was over. This was in part because drummer Colin Hanton's kit was lettered that way. In fact, Hanton remained a part of the group simply because he owned a set of drums. Before the Beatles was even a thing, there was a group known as the Quarry Men. This band was started in the 1950s by John Lennon and a few schoolmates from Quarry Bank High School. Paul McCartney joined the group in 1957 after seeing them play live. George Harrison also joined a year later. By 1960, Lennon began studying at the Liverpool College of Art, and his former schoolmates left the band. Thus, the Quarrymen no longer felt like a fitting name, since the group was not made up of Quarry Bank students anymore. They decided to come up with a new name. By October 26, 1959, the group was streamlined to just John, Paul McCartney and George Harrison, and the threesome decided to make a second go at Carol Leavis' TV show Discoveries. They called themselves Johnny and the Moondogs just for these auditions, which they unfortunately failed. One can't help but wonder whether Johnny and the Moondogs would have become a household word if they had passed the audition. In March 1960, new member Stuart Sutcliffe came up with the name Beatles, a play on Buddy Holly's cricket. The name didn't last long though, as band members went in their directions for a brief period. George played with another group, while John and Paul played two dates April 23 and 24 as the Nurt Twins. Around May 5, 1960, the group was known as the Silver Beatles. Brian Cassar, the leader of another Liverpool group called Cass and the Casanovas, suggested the name change in the first place. He proposed the name Long John and the Silver Beatles, but John would have none of the Long John bits. According to Ray Coleman, Long John Silver was once considered but rejected outright. For only one date, they called themselves the Silver Beats for a May 14 gig at Latham Hall in Liverpool. They were advertised to appear one week later under that name too, but that date was cancelled. In early July 1960, they billed themselves as the Silver Beatles, before finally settling on simply the Beatles around August 16, 1960. Credit for the name goes to both Sutcliffe and Lennon, though it's not certain just which one came up with the EA spelling. Different theories. A widely accepted theory came from Lennon's first wife, Cynthia. 
She alleged that the band had a drunken brainstorming session where they wanted to get a bug-related name that was inspired by Buddy Holly's band, The Crickets. Then member Stuart Sutcliffe eventually thought of the name The Beatles. However, there is also another theory floating around. This one came from the Beatles publicist Derek Taylor. According to his memoir, Taylor said that the Beatles came from the 1953 movie The Wild One, in which Marlon Brando's character referred to his leather jacket donning gang as Young Beatles. This theory is not completely sound though, as The Wild One was banned in the UK until 1967, so it's unlikely that any members saw it in 1960. Different answers from band members Meanwhile, the Beatles members themselves were often cryptic about where their name came from. In an interview with Dusty Springfield, Lennon was asked about this and he simply said, I just thought of it. Yet when he published an amusing biography of the Beatles in 1961, Lennon alleged that their name came from a dream. Many people ask what the Beatles are, he wrote. Why Beatles? Ah, Beatles, how did the name arrive? So we will tell you, it came in a vision. A man appeared on a flaming pie and said unto them, from this day on you are Beatles with an A. Thank you, Mr. Man, they said, thanking him. Beatles or Beatles? Of course, while fans are aware that the flaming pie theory was simply not true, there is still a question left to be answered. Why Beatles and not Beatles? According to Lennon, the name was supposed to be a reference to music. It was beat and Beatles when you said it. People thought of crawly things and when you read it, it was beat music, he said in 1964. Many years later, a poet named Royston Ellis began claiming that he was the one who thought of changing the extra E to an A. It's been confirmed that Ellis was indeed hanging out with John Lennon and Stuart Sutcliffe when they thought of the name. According to Ellis, at the time, Lennon decided to spell the name simply as Beatles, but Ellis told him to include the beat reference. Furthermore, Ellis also said that he made them chicken pie for dinner, but it caught fire in the oven, hence John Lennon's flaming pie story. After several decades, it's hard to know which story is the correct one. But while not everyone agrees on what the real story is, everybody can agree on the fact that the Beatles were no doubt one of the history's greatest bands. Bottom line, over 60 years on and there is still no settled answer to this question of how the band got their name. We're now so familiar with the name and its odd spelling that it's often forgotten how exotic it seemed in the early 1960s. Considering all the possible explanations, there's no real way of knowing for certain how they came up with the final iteration of the Beatles with an A. Not to mention the Fab Four were infamous for their silly answers in interviews. They never took any interviewers seriously, except for when Lennon was nearly crucified for saying that the Beatles were bigger than Jesus Christ. They were once asked in an interview what the Beatles means. In response they said, Beatles just mean us, adding, you know those small crawly things, we're the big crawly things. The band members were renownedly eccentric in their prime, so no surprise here. So what do you guys think? Which of the theories is more plausible and probable? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the Yellow Submarine. Oh, and maybe turn on post notifications. Now if you'll excuse me, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.